Manas, looking at reality, the cosmos, if you will, what are the most fundamental things? When we get down to absolute bedrock, the lowest, deepest level, what do we find? If we're talking about the physical level, the most fundamental aspects right now that we know is quantum theory. So I would say a physical universe, quantum theory is very fundamental. And quantum theory is, uh, quantum how does that differentiate from classical theory? Quantum theory is the modern theory of the structure of matter. And basically states that objects don't exist by themselves as hard little rocks, but they're flows of energy or patterns of field quantum field theory. And That's, probabilities are involved. Probabilities are involved, in events uh, happen, indeterminacy provides limits to what we know. All of that is part of quantum theory. Okay. And this may or may not be the most fundamental thing. It's the most fundamental thing we know now. It's the most fundamental thing we know now. For sure, it will lead to another theory more general. I'm sure of that down the road, maybe even around the corner, so to speak. <laughs> So that is at the physical level. All right, so is there another level? Well, the other level, of course, is the conscious level, the level of awareness. And I would say that awareness or consciousness is fundamental even to more fundamental than quantum theory. Why is that? Because you can have awareness, consciousness, without objects. So perhaps the most fundamental aspects of the universe, which actually unite consciousness and quantum theory, is the relationship between objects and subjects. So we would say that fundamental things in the universe are relationships and experiences. Qualia, we may call them qualia. Aren't you reading into the nature of reality something that's a a very recent product of the human mind that has come up in a few tens of thousands of years that, that now you are then projecting back into all reality? Well, actually, we don't know when it came about. We don't quite know if it's the last 10,000 years. We say the last 10,000 years is more or less when recorded history started, you know, give it, take a few yeah, thousand yeah. years. But that doesn't mean that there was not awareness or consciousness no, before I mean, that. You know, but the, the evolution of the sentient animals, you know, a few hundred million years, whatever number you want. I mean, th that's been the time frame for the, this evolutionary development. But you're taking this concept and then reading it back into the fundamentals of the, of the universe. Because in, in my view of the quantum view of the universe, reading it back is not just from the past to the future. Quantum theory allows for simultaneity, things to happen at the same time mm. or over the same spatial regions mm. of the universe far away from each other. Mm. They're still connected. So over time as well. Over as time space. as well as okay. space. So that sort of smells or smacks of some sort of universal awareness mm. that pre-existed space and time, even space and time. All right, so I'm going to go with you, not, not necessarily happily, but I will go with you <laughs> along this route. And so now I have consciousness being even more fundamental. I have quantum physics being our most fundamental physical theory at this time. It may go deeper, it will go deeper. So we have these two things. How do they relate together? I mean, how, how do you look at the, the universe in terms of uh, the relationship between uh, uh, consciousness and the physical stuff of which quantum theory is its basis? Well, in fact, there will be, in a way, related through complementary relationships. Remember, I said relationships are perhaps the most fundamental thing. And the most fundamental relationship is the object-subject relationship. Okay. I observe an object, or I observe you, and you, Robert, observe me. That's a relationship of the observation back and forth. That's fundamental to our existence as human beings. But quantum theory says that's actually what John Archibald Wheeler called participatory universe. That the universe is such because we participate, because there are conscious observers that participate in the universe. Does this call up some grand idea such as panpsychism, that consciousness is part of every 
piece of matter in the universe in some way, or pantheism, that the, all of the physical universe is, is godlike or consciousness-like. I mean, do you go that far? Well, I would say that I don't know of universes that are without consciousness, and if such universe exists, I would say they're irrelevant to our own experience. So I say, well, just because they're irrelevant to your experience doesn't mean that they exist. But how do we do you know that they exist? So the point of view that I am proposing here is actually very down-to-earth and realistic and very scientific. How can you suspect levels of reality that you can never know anything about them, ever? Then I say, okay, fine. They're dreams. They're not even dreams. Right. So, so talk about this reality, and because consciousness you have is such a fundamental part of this reality. What does that mean about the physical world? Is the physical world uh, everything have consciousness in it? Is it panpsychism? You could take it that way. You could say that everything is, has a certain level of awareness or panpsychism. Actually, you cannot really prove it. <laughs> you know, and so I would be the first one to say you can't prove it. Why you cannot prove but it? But you believe it? I do believe it. <laughs> but you cannot prove it because you cannot prove consciousness as an object because ultimately it is the subject. So you cannot prove it. And also by, by defining it as non-physical in the first place, you can't prove it something non-physical from a physical well, world. Well, but of course, it manifests as physical. Yeah. It's not that it's devoid of physical existence. It manifests as physical, but actually the physical is nothing more than another aspect of consciousness at a different level than perhaps the level of awareness of the human mind. Well, but that's a very big statement. You're saying the physical world is nothing but another expression of consciousness? Another expression you of relationship. You threw that comment off as though it's obvious, but, but that's, that, that sounds but absurd. But let's take a, uh, take a step back and say, well, what, in that case, you, uh, Robert asked me now, what is consciousness? I would say relationships, experiences. That's what consciousness is. So from that point of view, what I'm saying actually is down to earth. Well, you can have relationships between things that are not conscious. But how will you know them? Yeah, you, you would know, to, to, to introduce observers or knowledge, then you need a form of awareness. Okay. And the, perhaps the observer is very fundamental, so fundamental that the observer existed forever. But forever is in space or in time. In this case, it's in time, right? Far away, it's in space. Consciousness is outside of space and time. However, it gives rise to space and time. And it gives rise through space and time to relationships between objects and subjects, which are very fundamental.